Hi, everybody. 11.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, September 4, 2019. Dorian now has been upgraded to a Category 3 hurricane. And they are talking like it's going to be taking a direct hit uh, or uh, the Charleston area will be taking a direct hit. In fact, that McMaster's guy, who's the governor um, of South Carolina, Hurricane Dorian begins flooding coastal South Carolina. Governor McMaster says, all right, I will link below to everything. Yeah. As Hurricane Dorian lumbers up the Florida, Georgia coasts, parts of South Carolina were pelted with rain and flooded by waves Wednesday morning and early afternoon. Okay, you guys, in that area, would you please let us know? And the flooding, he said, was only expected to get worse. It is the water that kills people. It is the water that's the real danger. And it's clear that we are going to have a lot of water. Charleston began experiencing a king tide flooding parts of the city, McMaster said. Life-threatening storm surges. Okay. Um, here, at 9.28 p.m., this article came down, uh, came in. Few down trees, no major flooding reported. As it rolls on Beaufort County. Well, you know, when I saw Charleston was already getting flooded, I was concerned. All right, this guy is doing a live broadcast from Charleston, South Carolina. Thank you, Tina. Have a good night. Yes, I'm on. I will say that it doesn't look like there's much wind, and it does look or sound like it's raining, um, but, well, no flooding there. This is a live webcam of downtown Charleston. And it doesn't look like there's even much wind at all. Um, the street looks wet. It doesn't look like it's raining right now. Wind just picked up. Okay, I will link below to everything. Here is Dorian. The eye has moved up. It's now further north, but again, the signs of man's hand controlling this storm are there for all to see, um, especially on College of DuPage. You can see the microwave heating taking place. These concentric rings evaporate. You can see the evaporation taking place. But uh, you would think, now this is, this is South Carolina. You would think all of South Carolina would be getting rain. Well, I will tell you we're not up here in Anderson, South Carolina, though I have to say something is in the air. My eyes are killing me. Um, I don't know what the smell is, but it's not good. And it's a weird kind of humidity. Upstate, far away from the coast. So, you can see all of these uh, 
evenly spaced lines. So the frequencies are, are in use. Let's go to radar. And if you look closely, you can see that they are using the sawtooth, the sawtooth frequency. And you can see all of the neck, thread, harp, rings, one. Let's, here. Uh, I'm sorry, not even hurricanes. When Mother Nature made them, did she make these little points on the periphery, as you can see? So we've got a lot of the high frequency heating taking place, but here, you have one ring, two ring, three ringy dingy, ringy dingy. Yeah, it's almost like we're uh, living, well, I was going to say laughing. Um, it's more like a dark Saturday Night Live. Yeah, you see this square that juts out or the rectangle. Look, this is, it's obvious that it's so not Mother Nature. You can see, if you look closely, the jagged edges, the serrated edges, that's the sawtooth frequency. Um, here they are. Your Doppler radar stations at work. They emitting high frequencies into the ions on ionosphere and it bounces down as extremely low frequencies, which with that little concoction they can create hurricanes, cyclones. Look at this. It's obvious. You can see like the ripple. So we don't only have the high frequencies and the extremely low frequencies, but the microwaves also in use. And ain't it a shame that we can't get through to people? Yeah, it is. So here, they're they're saying that, well, category three. All right, category three is uh, 111 miles to 130 miles per hour. And here's Hurricane Dorian. This is the national, uh, the national data Buoy Center, this is a government site. This is weather.gov, NOAA. And these are the buoys. They always have to register the, the right speed. So here we have Charleston. Wind speed, 31 knots, gusting to 36 knots. And that is awfully close to the eye of the storm. So that buoy is about here. Well, it certainly is not registering even category two or category one wind speed. And this is the wind jammer the wind jammer volleyball camera uh, island isle of palm is that it isle of palms and there's no rain and wind some wind all right well very interesting isn't it here charleston webcams if you want to check some of them out this is the uh, South Carolina Department of Transportation, their webcams. Let's see. 
some circle forever, so I I don't feel like waiting. Um, let's see, Isle of Palm. City Charleston Beaches. All right, guys, hang on. I'll pause you. All right, so this is uh, Charleston, 77 Charleston Tower. And it there's some wind. Doesn't, I don't know what McMaster's was talking about, but when you have your government officials, you know, claiming Charleston is already flooding and you can't find any information on that flooding. I mean, this is Charleston Tower Upper and here is a car. Yeah, there's some wind and some rain. But when you hear that, and you've got these mandatory evacuation orders and people from Charleston have evacuated and then you hear the governor it's already flooding people freak out that's it's so unbelievably I it's it's so I don't even know what to say I just don't know what to say see if artillery works raining and wind this is interstate 26 in Charleston Morrison and East Bay Street um, the cars are driving and it does appear to be wet but no flooding that does not mean that you're not going to get hit bad. And that's what really pisses me off. Because, sorry, this is not, there's no indication that it is a hurricane at all. But they're gonna bring it, they're gonna bring it about. Too dark, okay. Um, here is the, Bell South Building. It is Northeast View College of Charleston. Looks like there's some wind. Doesn't look like it's raining. What is that? It's got to be a reflection. Um, and here, look at this picture. <laughs> yeah, a gorgeous sunset before Hurricane Dorian. All right. Now I've got to get that document. Hang on. Foreign Technology Division Artificial Clouds in the Earth's Atmosphere. Translated artificial clouds in the Earth's atmosphere and USSR scientists. Well, they were experimenting on creating artificial clouds. And wait until you hear what chemicals and heavy metals they were using. Okay, now the idea of creating an artificial luminous cloud. They proposed discharging a small quantity of sodium, sodium vapor into the atmosphere by rockets, thinking that because of resonant emission, the sodium atoms illuminated by the sun should form a luminous cloud in the atmosphere clearly visible from the Earth. Experiments were confirmed. Sodium atoms do glow in the 
upper atmosphere. Well then, after sodium, other substances began to be used, such as lithium, potassium, cesium, barium oxide, europium, I don't know, um, titanium tetrachloride, and trimethyl aluminum, capable of creating neutral and even ionized clouds. And soon a new type of artificial cloud appeared, smoke clouds, which I pointed out in my last video, uh, they putting in our face the artificial clouds on mainstream media, a picture of the eye of the hurricane, smoke clouds formed at stratospheric and mesospheric altitudes. The use of various substances, they glow as a result of chemical reactions with environmental components. And wait until you hear the different colors created in our sky due to the different uh, chemicals or heavy metals. In the 1970s, research on electrical fields from observations of the drift of ionized clouds um, just to point out these ionized clouds that's what we have now guys that's everything now is artificial and mother nature is gone and she ain't coming back so yeah, it's simple. The cloud was generated, the intensity of illumination in different spectral bands. As soon as the cloud appeared in the atmosphere, an astonishing spectacle whose beauty is probably only exceeded by the polar aurora begins to unfold in the sky. A long blue-green wake forms in the atmosphere from the discharge of trimethyl uh, aluminum interspersed with red and orange spheres from the discharges of lithium and sodium. Barium bursts out in a light blue cloud. It is rapidly separated into neutral and ionized parts which go off in different directions as time passes this entire rather closely grouped structure begins to be whimsically transformed by the vertical structure of the wind molecular and turbulent diffusion well what are we seeing in our skies well might they be spraying an awful lot and a whole lot to create this well gorgeous stunning it's a stunning sunset and well what did I have going on tonight here in upstate South Carolina uh, you can see the pink already. In fact, we have that an awful lot in our sky. And I know that you do too, because I read the comments and I see it. But this was tonight. And, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. This was tonight. And we had a bright pink and orange sky. This was right before the pink and orange. I couldn't, look, it would entail me getting into the car or, or walking a distance to get a good shot of it. But, I mean, even the moon looked to be glowing like a blue color. And that looks like a cutout. It doesn't look real. 
different colors. And I don't know what was in our air today and tonight, but it feels awful, it smells awful, it smells dirty, like, like a dusty chemical smell on the camera. Really focus that pulsating frequency. Microwaves that we see often. Here, I tried to get the pink, but lithium. Isn't that great? Lithium. And you'll see. The pink color, that is now what we see virtually every single night, every night. The sky looks like it's dying. a nice cell tower and it's all perfectly okay you know for everybody nobody seems alarmed at all by what has our sky has radically transformed into something that is so artificial and so toxic that it's not so surprising to see all life dying like our fabulous trees. So here it is. You know, the aluminum interspersed you know, with red or wait one second. A long blue green wake forms in the atmosphere from the discharge of aluminum interspersed with red and orange spheres from the discharges of lithium and sodium. And this document, Weather Modification by Carbon Dust, Absorption of Solar Energy. Carbon dust as an artificial heat source. And what can it do? Well, the production of extra cumulus convection and an extra local mesoscale convergence. This extra cumulus heating is likely to feed back to the mesosystem and keep it going or intensify it. Maintenance and growth can occur after the original heat has dissipated. You can intensify the heat Yes. How a weak mesosystem might be generated upwind from a tropical coastline. The vertical clouds, radiation induced temperature changes. And those temperature changes can be uh, rapid. Here, another, another method of creating enhanced rainfall negative ions are generated from a high voltage corona discharge wire array ions become attached to particles in the atmosphere which later act as condensation nuclei the electric charges are transferred the electric charges that lightning that you see in these mammoth clouds 
that's what's going on. Uh, ion plume conveyed to the higher atmosphere by wind, convection, and turbulence. Electric charges influence the collision and coalesce, coalescence of the cloud droplets, resulting in enhanced rainfall downwind from the Atlant. Yeah. Well, black carbon absorbs sunlight and heat from the Earth. Black carbon seeds clouds. Black carbon breaks up clouds in certain situations. And guess what? We have a whole lot of black carbon. In fact, did you not see that? You see it as gray and pink going on. Where is the video that I took earlier? Not sure, I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. You see the black, you see the pink, you see the, the, uh, the white that looks sickly. All right, that's the black carbon dust. And it can create heat waves but it can also um, create cloud these are some of the companies that disperse the ions in order to influence precipitation derived originally from a Russian technology known as ionization of the local areas. An array of towers, wires, sometimes steel wool, sorts of tufts, and a high electrical potential in order to produce corona current. And guess what? We have our electric companies involved in it. Here, uh, ERCOT, AEP, Ohio, Texas, Appalachian Power Company, Indiana, Michigan Power, Kentucky Power, Public Service Company of Oklahoma, Southwestern Electric Power Companies. Hey, yeah, they're all involved. So, uh, I'll show you here, black carbon dust makes clouds bigger, and you see they are vertical clouds. Do you see the vertical clouds in your area? Um, but the black carbon dust, uh, it can enhance rainfall. It can reduce the inner core of hurricane intensity. It can enhance the size of clouds and give selective land regions precipitation. It can alter tropical cyclones. It can dissipate fog. It can accelerate snow melt. black carbon. Do you see this a lot in your area? Your sky looking like this? Or how about, how about a sheet, a very defined lined sheet of dark gray? I have. So, yeah, NASA creates clouds over Alaska in conducting weather experiment. And this was back in, 
I can't see the the year 19 something in deflecting hurricanes where do we aim them Th this 1970 weather may be unnaturally severe because of unnatural modification decades ago CIA are the weathermen did the CIA alter weather order weather modification to to ruin the Cuban sugar crop in 1969 and 1970 Navy creation destroying clouds ordinary carbon black used Wow yes neutral aerosols add a little carbon black and voila you got charged aerosols growing growing because they attach and look at this mystery ingredient influences cloud formation oh boy I just don't know what it could be clouds create colorful stripes across the sky at sunset pink black orange 2011 so Climate change is messing with the clouds. I get sick to my stomach looking at this stuff now. The bad news about clouds, we know even less about them than we thought. Oh my God. Earth's clouds are getting lower. Yes, they are. And it could be a good thing? Huh. I don't think so. So, here, pictures of smoke clouds you see these in your area they look like cauliflower and if you observe they grow and grow and grow and then you start seeing this black form smoke clouds right there I see them often often here in South Carolina All right, guys. Well, you know why I don't like lies and people believing them and they carry on and on and on and on and on? Is that they create this hurricane, they cause an awful lot of damage in the Bahamas. They're about to cause more da da damage. And, well, how are you guys doing in Georgia and South Carolina? Um, so CNN, the timing is perfect, right? CNN announces details for climate crisis town hall. Wow. Yeah. The candidates line up for this unprecedented prime time event focused on the climate crisis. And they just pound away the lies. You know? And then, like, you know, people who are just, you know, ordinary, decent people, they can't, they can't wrap their heads around people lying constantly, constantly, constantly. And the lies become louder and louder. And the cycling of the lies, it, the, the repetition, well, then you get them 24-7. Why do they do this? Because it works. It works. It's climate change. It's global warming. Oh, man is not creating clouds and creating what? Well, the damage from what they claim is a hurricane. You know, I also just want to show you this. Yeah. Today in Double Eagle Six, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, for the fourth ESC. Early entry command post. We got LOs here from first calf. We got America's total army in the fight for Hurricane Lorraine. This is a big deal. This is an awesome team right here on the front edge of dealing with what could be a big problem for a lot of people. All of you out there in America's Army Reserve, be proud of this team. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you're doing for your fellow countrymen. Our hearts go out to the, all those folks in the islands uh, where this storm has passed, Bahamas and other places. And we'll do everything we can with our authorities and our 
our mission is to take care of everybody who has already been devastated by this horrific storm. I just want everybody on this team to know how proud we are of this organization, this group, everything you represent, and your fellow citizens, and for America's Army. Or if you keep pounding, we'll see you soon. The Army is on it. And nothing seems to phase our fellow Americans. The Army, the, uh, we've got military on our streets, we've got that urban warfare training taking place in North Carolina as I speak. For weeks, they're going to be, yeah, the gunfire, the bombs, and I still haven't heard from anybody what is going on with this training. I haven't been able to find any articles. I've been seeing people linking to videos, but it's the same article and the same video that we saw before the training started. I want to know what's happening now, but here, okay, America, hey, Americans, could you, like, uh, posse comitatus, uh, we didn't have our military involved in everything taking place, uh, and, well, that's very alarming. Um, well, I don't know. Can't get through. Just can't get through. Here, they're talking about massive flash flooding. Massive flash flooding in Charleston. Another army guy is... Immense, that's what he said, immense flash flooding coming to the South Carolina coast. Well, this is one Pacific Redwood. Dorian moving north-northwest, superheating occurring on west side of storm, blast pattern visible. So. I'll just play a minute of this. I will link to everything below. I wish we could get through to our fellow Americans, but it does not seem that we can, um, which means they're just going to continue on and on. Do you see the microwaves being used right up here? Do you see the flat line edge of the hurricane? That is not natural. Let's look next at the... Uh this, this is, is the water vapor map, map, and we can see some very interesting detail here as well. See the flat spot right there. And, and notice the blast pattern right, uh, hang on here. Right, right here, this area right, right here, we see a tremendous blast pattern, that icicle pattern, pattern right, right there. there. And we, we see, see the eye wall open up. up. Just to like this area was targeted. Also, you see a hole open up in the bands as this uh, spins around. So, so the superheating process causes the water vapor, the atmospheric water vapor in this system, wherever they target it, to rapidly expand, and that's what's causing. This uh, uh, icicle pattern, pattern right here along the north uh, western edge. And of course, we have a lot of high pressure because all this, look at it here, all this moves clockwise. So we've got high pressure drier air right here on the uh, western side of the storm, which is preventing it from moving over the state of Florida. Once again, we can see that here in the uh, long wave infrared map. You can see some very odd evaporation patterns occurring right here. You see that blast pattern. This, this storm is being targeted. No, no question about that. This uh, system could have been superheated and destroyed just like we saw with Tropical Storm Aaron right up here just about four or five days ago. So when people argue on the, uh, in the comment section that we don't know what we're talking about and whether it can't be controlled and all of this sort of nonsense, uh, just, just look up all of the patents that are uh, in the, uh, filed with the U.S. Patent Office on techniques and methods to modify weather. Yeah, and it's, uh, well, 
It's so easy to do. The research is easy. It's easy. You know, why people don't do it? You got me here, patent, weather modification by artificial satellite. What can they do? <gasps> Cause precipitation, increase the humidity, modify the jet stream, therefore modify weather. Create a high humidity air mass or to form clouds. Increase the moisture content of the air mass. High humidity air rises to higher altitudes. It begins to cool and form clouds. All right, guys. All links are below. It's hard watching this. It's hard just watching people get destroyed over and over and over again by man-made weather events.